Welcome everyone, I'm Chelsea and this is Christian. Hello. <laughs> and this is the Lounge Room Yoga Project, brought to you from our lounge room. Today's practice is going to be for people that have endometriosis. It's going to be a practice that's very much focused on relaxing the pelvis. Uh, I do suggest that you check in with your doctor before you practice. We're going to use some props if you don't have yoga props. I'm going to give you some options. So if you don't have blocks, grab two books that are about the same size. If you, <coughs> if you don't have a bolster, which is like a big yoga pillow, just grab yourself two pillows. And then I also suggest uh, that grabbing yourself a thin blanket is also a really nice idea. So let's start. Christian's going to demonstrate, we're going to lay down in Supta Baddha Konasana with our prop. So laying on your back, pillows or bolster underneath the knees, soles of the feet together and the knees wide. So you're creating a diamond shape with the legs. And then today, just place your hands onto your belly. Closing down the eyes. Allowing the weight of your body to soften into the support of your yoga mat. And allowing your attention to softly land on your breath. Feeling the breath swirl in and out of the nostrils. Inhaling cool air. Exhaling warm air. Notice where the breath is moving your body. Perhaps you feel movement in the chest, the belly, maybe you feel the back of your torso pressing up against the mat. Throat. Can you welcome in the breath? Welcome in the sensations of breathing. As we move through the practice today, the focus is to soften and relax and open the pelvis. And I encourage you to take the practice slowly and allow it to be an exploration. Take rest when you need to take rest. Let's take a deep inhale together. Release through the mouth, exhale. Allow the lips to close. 
And take very generous and full deep breaths now. Gently restrict the back of your throat. So the breath will become audible. It sounds a little bit like the ocean. Your own personal ocean. The breath can be your anchor. Breath will tell you when you're pushing too far. It will become short, sharp, or even violent. So stay with the breath, with the breath, and try to maintain this slow, oceanic way of breathing. From here, place your hands either side of your thighs. Gently, gently bring the knees towards one another and then towards your chest. Give yourself a hug. And just a little rock from side to side here, massaging the back of the body. way up into an all four position you might rock and roll up and down the length of your spine or you might just roll to one side just move your pillows your bolster to the side and we'll meet in some cat cow so stack your joints wrists underneath shoulders knees underneath hips gently hug your navel towards your spine and your inner thighs towards one another so it's like you've got a big book between the thighs Inhale now, draw the sit bones towards the ceiling, open the heart forward. And exhale around the spine, tuck the tailbone, chin to chest. Inhale, sit bones draw up, heart open. Exhale around. Deep inhale, this is our cow posture. Long exhale, this is our cat posture. And just continue to move between these two positions with your breath. Continuing to welcome the breath. If you feel like you want to begin to move in a different way, you're so welcome. So I really think of yoga as a conversation with the self. We have an opportunity to not only listen in, but also to respond. breaths come back to your all four position with a neutral spine I'm just going to come onto my side so you can see me my feet are just on our rolled up carpet <laughs> so we're going to do the same cat cow movement in the pelvis only so keeping the arms and the upper back as it is I'm going to rock the pelvis so inhale sit bones draw up and then exhale round curve the pelvis yeah Inhale, sit bones up. And exhale round. And just take a few more breaths like this. Really bring the awareness into the pelvis.
really nice. From here, let's neutralize once again, bring your knees towards one another. I'm gonna take some big circles now. I personally like to bring my hands a little forward. I don't know if it's because I've got long arms or longer legs, I don't know. <laughs> but we're gonna bring our, the hips to the right, and then forward, and then to the left. Yeah, and just adjust the hands if you need to. So to the right, forward, and to the left. And these circles can be as large or as small as you like. And going the opposite direction, so hips to the left, forward and to the right. Observe what's happening with the breath. And we'll meet in an extended child's pose. So knees wide, big toes together, forehead to the mat, arms forward, relax. Welcoming breath. Nice, one vertebra at a time. Begin to lift yourself up. We're going to bring our buttocks to the mat, bring the feet wide and the knees together. So we've actually got some internal rotation of the hips here, not something that we do a lot of the time. And just release your hands behind you, yeah. I'm just gonna rock the legs from side to side like a windscreen wiper. So bring the knees towards the right, nice and slowly, and then bring them towards the left. Yeah, to the right, and to the left. And just being with this oceanic breath. So very, very gently mobilizing the pelvis, releasing tension. Working a little bit into the hips here. So the next time you drop the knees to the left, let's pause here. Allow the knees to come down so your left foot is cupping your right knee. Reach your left hand behind you and bring your right hand to the left knee. Find some length through the spine as you inhale and gently twist towards the left as you exhale. Your right buttock will be lifted. So twisting and back bending are two really wonderful things to do to release cramps from endometriosis. But I do encourage you to take it really gently. If you push it too far, it can actually increase cramps the next day. So just be gentle with yourself, take it slow. And we're just going to swap to the opposite side. So just flipping the legs. This time it's the right foot cupping the left knee. Right hand behind you. Left hand to the right knee. Find some length as you inhale. Twist as you exhale. to centre. We're going to cross over the ankles, roll over the knees and find our way into a down dog. 
Just feel free to walk out your feet, swing your hips. Listening into the sensation, responding through movement, or maybe your response is stillness. So pressing down through the base knuckle of your pointer finger now, take quite a nice deep bend through the knees and push the sit bones towards the ceiling. So really prioritizing a long, straight spine here in our down dog. Tippy toes now, walk yourself all the way towards the top of the mat. Feet are hip distance apart here. Just grab hold of each opposite elbow, bending through the knees. Just allowing yourself to hang forward. There could be a nod of the head for yes, shake of the head for no, a little rock from side to side. And let's release this grip. One vertebrae at a time, begin to round yourself up, roll yourself up. We're gonna take a modified version of Sun Salutation A. So we're gonna lift our palms up to the sky, interlace the fingers and place the hands to the base of your skull. Inhale, very gentle back bend here, elbows widen. And as you exhale, bring the elbows towards one another and roll down the spine. Release, we'll take a halfway lift, fingertips to the shins, inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, plant your hands down and step back to a plank pose. So our shoulder blades are in protraction, they're rounding, back of the heart pressing to the ceiling, and your pubic bone moves towards your face. So there's a shortening through the front side of the body. Now reach the crown of your head forward, drop your knees and untuck the toes. Keep drawing the pubic bone towards the face, lower down onto your belly, chaturanga. Bring your hands off of your yoga mat and onto the floor, fingertips on the floor, palms lifted. Now press your toes down and press your pubic bone down. Take this nice and gently, inhale, lift up for a baby cobra, very gentle back bend. Exhale, release the forehead down. Hands down to your lower ribs, keep the spine straight, push yourself up onto your knees, extend your child's pose, knees wide, big toes together, hands forward and forehead to the mat. So back bends can feel really good to release cramps. But again, we just don't want to push too far. So as we work through this sun salutation sequence, Explore. Explore the limit, what feels good. No need to push yourself to the extreme here. Find your way back to down dog. Let's walk ourselves towards the top of the mat. Could be lots of little steps or two big steps. Halfway lift, inhale. Fold as you exhale. Inhale, rise the palms up to the sky. We're gonna interlace the fingers, bring the hands to the base of the skull. The next inhale, we widen the elbows. And the exhale, we roll down through the spine. Your next inhale, fingertips to shins, lengthen the spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Crown of the head moves forward, drop knees, untuck toes, lower down onto the belly. Find the young cobra pose, hands off of your mat, inhale, lift. Gently, gently. Exhale, release the head. Hands to lower ribs, lift yourself up to the knees, extended child's pose.
down dog. Walk yourself towards the top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale, fold, exhale. Inhale, rise the palms up. Exhale, interlace fingers, hands to the base of the skull. Inhale, widen elbows. Exhale, roll down through the spine. This could take you a couple of breaths. Your next inhale is a halfway lift. Next exhale, fold and step back, plank. Inhale, crown the head forward. Exhale, lower onto your belly. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, release the head. Extend to child's pose. Take your time. And find your way back, down dog. Little bend through the left knee, inhale rises the right leg to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, step the foot forward. Drop your back knee, untuck the toes and rise the palms up for a low lunge. So opening the hips now. Press your right heel down and then energetically drag it back. And find the sense that the skin on the belly is lifting towards the face. Inhale, we reach through the fingertips to the ceiling. Exhale, we're going to take a gentle twist. So the right hand comes to your sacrum. That's that flat part, the lower part of the spine. Left hand comes to the right knee. Inhale, find some length. Exhale, twist and pivot the heart open towards the right. Inhale, rise the palms to the sky. Exhale, hands to mat, half monkey pose. So straighten through your right leg and flex the right foot toes towards your face. This is an excellent opportunity to use your props. So you could place your books or your blocks either side of the right leg here for support. It's just bringing the mat a little closer towards you. Right foot toes are flexing towards you. A little bend through this right knee. Inhale, find some length through the spine here. And then think about opening the front of your heart more towards the front of the room. Plant this right foot down. Just remove the props for the moment. Tuck your back foot, lift your back knee. We're taking a Skandasana. So you're going to bend deeply through the right knee and then straighten through your left leg as you open the hips towards the left side of the room. Great, so the pelvis is facing towards the left. Now Christian's demonstrating here, it's really nice to sit yourself on top of a prop. So for me, I've got two books. I might like to stack my two books and sit myself here. That right heel can be on the mat or it can be lifted. Just make sure you have a little bend through this left knee. Press your right knee behind you. Yeah, really good. And then option to bring your hands to prayer at the heart if you want a little more. So opening through the hips here. Increasing circulation to the pelvic area. Find your way back to the top of the mat, just removing the props. Step yourself back. 
You can flow or you can rest. So cram the head, moves forward, drop knees, untuck toes, exhale to your belly. Inhale to your cobra. Exhale to release the head. We'll meet back in extended child's pose. Three breaths here. All flows from now on are totally optional. If you want to skip all of them, you're so welcome. You could come straight to a child's pose or a down dog. Down dog. Little bend through the right knee, inhale, lift left leg up. Exhale, knee to chest, step the foot forward, forward, drop the back knee, untuck the toes and rise the palms up. So skin on the belly lifts, or if you prefer the image of the two frontal hip bones lifting towards the face, you could also use that. Press left heel down and back. So really supported and stable in the legs. Reach through the fingertips as you inhale. Twist to the left as you exhale. So the left hand comes to the sacrum. The right hand comes to the left knee. And you have total control of how far you go, how deep you go. Inhale, rise the palms up. Exhale, hands to mount, Ardha Hanumanasana, half monkey pose, straighten through your left leg. Support yourself with props if you like. Being with that slow, deep, oceanic breath. Remove the props, finding a low runner's lunge at the top of the mat, and then opening the pelvis towards the right. Left knee deeply bent, right leg is straight, right foot toes pointing directly up towards the ceiling. Feel free to use your props here. It's about seven o'clock in the morning where we are, so <laughs> Christian and I are definitely choosing the prop option. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You're often tighter in the morning, yeah? So give yourself the support that you need. And maybe you stay here. Maybe your hands come to prayer. And we're pushing that left knee behind us to increase the opening through the hip and groin. to the top of the mat, remove your props and take a floor if you like. We'll meet in extended child's pose. Down dog. Little bend through left knee, right leg rises up. Exhale, knee to chest, step the foot forward. Release the left heel down, back foot toes are slightly pigeon toe. We're going to lift ourselves up for a warrior two. So, warrior two is a really 
long stance, deep bend through the right knee. Our right hip, that's the hip of the leg that is bent, is ever so slightly moving back. Our left hip, the one of the leg that is straight, is ever so slightly moving forward. Release your back palm, flip your front right palm and then reach the right palm behind you so we're in an exalted warrior now. Oh, feeling this beautiful stretch down the right side of the body. Now we're going to move into a modified side angle pose. So your right forearm is going to come to your right thigh as your left hand reaches up to the ceiling. Press down through the heels and squeeze them in. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, modified side angle. Inhale, exalt. Keep the deep bend through the right knee. Exhale, side angle. Take a few more like this. Connecting breath and movement. After your next side angle, inhale, lift up for warrior two. Straighten through your right leg and slightly shorten the stance by bringing your left foot in a little bit. We're going to take Trikonasana three angle pose. So reach your right hand forward in space, lengthen through the right side of the body, and then right hand comes down to your calf as your left arm reaches up to the, uh, to the ceiling. Really press your right heel down, yeah. Lift your two uh, kneecaps up into the thighs. And see if you can equally press down through the left heel. Find some more space through the right side of the body. Yeah. And then pivot the heart open more to the ceiling. This right heel, it's like we're pressing down and then trying to spiral the heel out. Core engage, lift yourself up. Pivot your right toes towards the side of the room, bring your hands to your hips. Retract your shoulder blades to so bring them together. Inhale, open through the heart. And then exhale, fold yourself forward. Great. Bring your hands to the mat. Deep breath. Maybe there's a gentle rock of the head, a yes and a no. Play with what it is to bring the weight a little more into the toes and the sit bones a little more towards the ceiling. Let's release, pivot ourselves towards the front of the room. Step ourselves back, take your flow or rest. Down dog. Inhale, rising the left leg to the sky. Exhale, knee to chest, step the foot forward. Drop that back heel, slightly pivot the toes in, lift up, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. So there's really a sense of taking up space in warrior two, expanding into the space around you. Exalt your warrior, right hand to back thigh, left hand overhead. 
Continue the welcoming in of breath. Modified side angle, left forearm to thigh, right hand to ceiling. Inhale, exalt. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, exalt. Exhale, side angle. Inhale. Exhale. And just take a few more in your own time. Keep pressing down through the heels, squeezing them in towards you. Your next side angle will be the last one. Warrior two. Straightening through the left leg, shortening the stance. Inhale, reach left hand forward through space, lengthening through the left side of the body, and then left hand down to the calf as the right arm reaches up to the sky. If you press deeply down into the heels, you will find a greater sense of lightness through the body. Leg through the left side of the body, opening through the heart. And lifting yourself up, pivot the toes towards the side of the room, hands to your hips, open through the heart, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. This time we'll take some movement, so deep bend through the right knee. Come back to center and deep bend through the left knee. And really exploring some depth here now if that feels good. Maybe the torso gets involved, the head gets involved. Maybe you find a spot that feels good, you want to hang out there for a moment. Freedom of movement. some stillness and then make your way back to the top of the mat, very final flow of the class. Coming into a seated position, bring your pelvis to the mat and swing the legs forward. We come down onto our back, so feet are hip distance apart, reach your fingertips towards the front of the room, slightly tuck the tailbone so you'll feel a kind of a curve through the pelvis now, and then follow that one vertebrae at a time to come all the way onto your mat, so spinal articulation. When you arrive, relax the shoulders and relax the head down and then walk your feet a little closer towards your buttocks. And take some bridge lifts here. So we want our feet to be hip distance apart. Press down through the heels and imagine that you have your block or your book between the thighs. We're just imagining energetically squeeze that block or book. And then from here, lift your pelvis up towards the ceiling. Place your hands to the pelvis, so your thumbs are on the two frontal hip bones and your fingers wrap back to the fleshier part of the buttocks. I'm going to tilt the pelvis, so your two frontal hip bones move more towards the face and your sit bones move more towards the hamstrings. And this is the pelvic tilt we're going to look for as we take our bridge lifts, release the hands down 
and then one vertebrae at a time, roll down. Inhale now, one vertebrae at a time, lift yourself up, finding that pelvic tilt. And exhale, releasing down. Continue to move like this. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. So like this in your own time. Just notice what's happening with your chin and neck. If your chin is tucking in towards the chest, just take the chin towards the back of your room creating some space between the neck and the mat. We just don't want to place any pressure on the vertebrae in the neck here. Keep squeezing that big imaginary book between the thighs. round, allowing the pelvis to come all the way down, bringing the feet as wide as your yoga mat, allowing the knees to knock together. Place one hand to the belly, one hand to the heart. Observe. What can you feel? Coming home to the body. knees are going to move a little wider now and then bring the knees towards your shoulders as you do you can collect the legs with the hands just releasing the lower back could be a very little gentle rock can be nice to give yourself a big hug, interlace the fingers in front of you here. Massaging into the hips. Bring the knees in towards one another now. Massaging the internal organs. We're going to make our way back into a seated position. So you might rock to one side or just rock yourself up. I'm going to take Janu Shashasana with some props. So extend your legs forward. Then bring your left knee in towards the chest and place the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. I recommend that you stack some books or blocks in front of you to the inside of the right leg. And to make it comfortable for yourself, grab your blanket and pop your blanket on top of the books. It's an option. Rest your hands either side of the right leg and then fold yourself forward into your, into your Janu Shashasana. Allowing your head to be held by the props. posture supports our reproductive system, releases tension from the organs. We 
also soothes the nervous system. It's particularly good for anxiety. In Chinese medicine, we have meridian lines in the body, which are kind of like an energetic road map. We have one line that moves from the back of the legs up the torso. And this one I'm talking about is the urinary bladder channel. And that governs our ability to cope with change. And we're accessing it here as we fold forward into this posture. Gently lifting yourself up. We're just going to move to the opposite side. So I'm going to cross my right leg in, move the props, and then extend the left leg out. So it's now the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Set your props up. Hands rest either side of the left leg and fold forward. Lifting yourself up one vertebrae at a time and just remove your props. I'm going to give you two options for our final posture. It's important that if you are menstruating that you don't invert whilst menstruating if you have endometriosis. So I'm going to give you an inversion option, Viparita Karani, but if you're menstruating, you're going to take the second option which will be a supine twist. So option number one, if you're not menstruating, is to slide any prop underneath your pelvis, like so, and lifting the legs up towards the ceiling. Allowing the legs to be soft, the feet to be soft. You can even lift the arms up to the ceiling. If 
you're menstruating, you're just going to take a twist. So bring your arms wide, lift your right leg to the sky, cross your right leg over the left leg, bring the buttocks one or two inches to the right and drop the legs to the left. Our inversion, our Vipariti Grani is really, really wonderful for the endocrine system. It helps balance the hormones, also soothes the nervous system. You're twisting, bringing the legs back to centre, uncross the legs, we'll take the opposite side, so extending left leg up, cross left leg over right, buttocks one or two inches to the left and drop the legs to the right. If you're in your twist, bring the legs back to centre, uncross the legs, pelvis central. If you're in your inversion, gently bring the feet back down. Lifting the pelvis, removing your block or prop. Bring the knees in towards the chest and give yourself a really big hug. Maybe the chin moves towards the chest, the forehead towards the knees. And then come into Shavasana, our final resting position. So it's great to set yourself up with some props here for support. Bolster or your pillows underneath the knees supports the lower back. Super, super um, nurturing variation of Shavasana. I also suggest that you grab your blanket and pop the blanket over the top of you. Just get yourself really snug. We love to get snug in Shavasana here in this house. <laughs> and it can also be nice to place a book or a pillow over the top of the torso as well. So lots of options for you to try. When you arrive, taking up some space. Take a deep inhale. A long exhale, letting go of any control breathing. Being with the sensations of the body. Particularly if we experience pain in the body, or discomfort in the body and mind, it can feel difficult for us to feel at home within ourselves. And this yoga practice can be an exploration. An opportunity to explore what it is 
to feel safe in the body. And perhaps it's just a pocket of safety and belonging. Maybe in the breath. Or maybe there's a particular part of the body where you feel safe. Can there be a welcoming of yourself home here? Welcoming yourself in your fullness with nothing to change. The way that you would welcome a child into the world. Or an old friend into your home. I encourage you to stay here in Shavasana for as long as you like. It can be really nice to line up a song of a particular length, say eight or ten minutes, and stay in Shavasana for the duration of that song. Thank you so much for practicing with both myself and Christian. It really is such a pleasure and an absolute privilege to guide you. Stay and rest here and to you I say namaste. Namaste.